This will be another print merge project. We're going to do a few things in an advanced manner that will show you a little more of the power of the newer CorelDRAW print merge feature. That's uh, CorelDRAW 10, 11, and 12. I'm using 12 here. I'm going to tell it I want a new file. And I'm going to tell it that I'd like this to be about the size of a door plate. So I'm going to tell it 8 inches wide, 2 inches tall, and we'll make the background yellow just so we can see what we're doing. And then we're going to get started on building a layout here. Let's go to our text tool and tell it we'd like this text to maybe be about 38 points. We'd like this to be Arial Black. And we'll put in a number didn't get the aerial black so we'll now make that aerial black and we'll go to our pick tool press P to put that in the middle of the page and then maybe uh, control drag that over here knowing using a control key to drag that that forces it to be uh, in the center where the P forced it in the beginning. Then uh, the next part is kind of uh, what we'll do that's a little unique and that is we want to build a paragraph text object which we'd like to use about this much room. And in that paragraph object we would want that also to be let's say 38 points and maybe uh, let's put that in uh, Times Roman bold and we'll put uh, name here. But we want to use this paragraph text in a unique way because in this particular project we've got some names and or room titles that will not fit in one line. So we want that to jump to the next line. Well, if we have one line, we want it to be centered. But if we have two lines and or even three lines, we'd still like to be centered in the middle of our layout. So let's modify that. Let's go to text and format text. And let's go to paragraph first and tell it under the paragraph text that tab that we want that center aligned. Ah, let's go now to the tabs though. No, it's columns. And tell it we want the vertical justification also to be centered. Matter of fact, I'm going to undo that. Let's leave it back where it was and OK that. So step one is make that centered left and right. We did that under text, format text, paragraph, and alignment. But now we're going to go to columns and tell it we want the vertical justification also to be centered. Now we have our object there in the in the middle of our paragraph. Alright, now we're going to work on print merge. Since I already have Microsoft Excel in the background with a set of data that we can bring into our print merge then we're going to take this approach. We're we have already created a list from scratch. Honestly this list of data is a real live information that was sent to me via email and said how can I get that in there. So I just brought it into, Cor brought it into Excel and now we're going to create a data file for that. So whether you create it from scratch, import it, or whatever, we want to create a data file now that would uh, lend itself toward the Corel print merge feature. So we're going to save this Excel worksheet, save as, and let's call this uh, uh, merge data. Here's the important part. We want that to be text tab delimited. Now different versions of Excel will say that a little differently. You'll find it a little differently. This is an older version. It really makes it pretty easy. But keep searching until you find a way to export or save as text with tab delimited. 
and we're calling this merge data. We're putting this in a number one file folder. So let's save that. Now, an important little tip here. It will mess CorelDRAW up if we now try to immediately open that while Excel is still claiming control over it. So at this point, I'm going to shut down that data file. Do I want to save my changes? No. So now when we go over to CorelDRAW on an attempt to do our print merge, uh, we should be able to open up that file. So we'll go to File, Print Merge, Create Load Merge File. In this case, we want to select from an existing file. And that file was in my one file folder, and we called it uh, Merge Data. And then we'll Next. Notice now what it has done. It has picked up the first two fields in that as our variable holders. I intentionally put those at the top so I wouldn't have to uh, do anything over here. So in the first row of our Excel data sheet, we put in the name or whatever variable holder we want to use. Then we'll Next, and here's all our data. So we need to know need to make no modifications there, and finally we'll finish that. And then we want to replace our in our layout our part here. This is important, reminding you that we must not pick select but sweep select, and then tell it that that's where we want name. Then where do we want the room number? Uh, we'll put it over here. So we're sweep selecting that. So we put, before we went to print merge, we got those in the proper location, the proper font, all the proper attributes. And now we're replacing that text with our print merge placeholders. And uh, in this case, I'm a little concerned that that is going so close to the edge. So I'm going to move that over just, uh, just a little bit. But we should be OK there since we only have three room numbers in there anyway. And our text is centered there. So I'm not going to mess with that anymore. Now we're ready to do our print merge. As a general rule, it's always a good idea to deselect everything. Sometimes it causes problems if when you do your perform print merge, which we're about to do, that you have something selected. So now we'll do a perform print merge. And we'll tell it uh, we're going to uh, the laser engraver, maybe uh, Legend 151. And on the properties there, we'll be sure we have the table size, set up our speed and power for maybe flexibrass. As a matter of fact, uh, let's change our mind. I want to do one other thing there. Let's tell it both raster and vector. We'd like for it to cut all of these out. So we're going to do both raster and vector. And so we want a speed vector about, uh, let's say, about 40 and a power of about, uh, let's say, 25. And then on the raster, we'll go 100% speed and 60% power. And then, however, we want to go to our layout and go to an imposition layout previously prepared, which would be 3 by 6 upper left. Now it doesn't look like I have one, so let's just create one. We're going to start with our uh, one by one upper left, which will take one part and put it up here, and then we'll edit that. And let's take a look at it so we can see the effects of what we're doing. And I'm going to tell it here that I want uh, three of those across, and we want maybe six up and down. We want to do this on a 12 by 24 sheet of material. So there we have 24 across and 12 inches up and down. And so there's our data. Uh, 
and we'll come back to this in just a moment. Well, while we're here, let's click on Signature 2. There's the second page full of those. Notice that uh, some of the text was too long, so it broke that into a second line there, but everything is still centered. We'll look on through here. Notice here another very long line. That almost filled up two. So we're clicking on, it's going to take four signatures to generate this, or four pages, four runs on our laser engraver to be able to do that. But now that we, let's save this so we don't have to do it again. And here I'm going to call it uh, three by six, upper left. So anytime we run this, type of a job again, or anytime we need three across and six up and down, it doesn't have to be this size, that imposition layout will work for us. And then in this case, I'm going to apply this and then cancel it out. If I apply it, I don't lose all the work I've done. Had I canceled that out, then all the work I've done since I came into the print dialog would be lost. But I want to do one other thing in our layout just to also help us to explain that we can go back and forth between these. Uh, actually, I notice now that I don't even have this centered, so I'm going to press P to put that in the middle of the page. And then I'll bump it over to where it looks right about graphically or visually in between those. So that was one thing I wanted to do, but I also wanted the laser to cut these out for me. After I got over there, I decided I wanted to do both raster and vector. So I'm going to put a page frame on. We'll double click on a rectangle tool. That's a CorelDRAW shortcut for putting a page frame on. And then we're going to go to the shape tool. And we want to be sure that our rounded corners is unlocked. And we may want about a uh, 40% here. Now it's going to make us actually drag those corners first. So we want a 40% on that corner and a 40% on that corner. That's what I wanted, but we don't want, if I send it over now, it's going to go right up against my ruler, and then on the bottom side, the next row is going to cut twice on that same line. So I want to remove about 50 thousandths from each side to remind you that we can do a little bit of math in the Corel Draw field. So I'm going to tell it 8 inches minus 50 thousandths, and then 2 inches minus 50 thousandths. And you see what that does. That brought our this line in 50 thousandths of an inch all the way around. Let's zoom up on that and see if we can confirm what it has done here. So now we have a 50 thousandths border all around there. And for no good reason other than it's just my habit to always make that red. And then it reminds me the next time I open it up what I was trying to do. So there we have our... Let's call it our finish part. I'm going to be sure nothing is selected. And then we'll perform the print merge again. It remembers all that work that I just did. So now we're ready to uh, send that to, the, to, to our laser or sublimation machine or whatever our application calls for.